and welcome to Indus News live from Islamabad. I am Hira Mustafa and these are the headlines. In Afghanistan, 13 people have been killed and 20 others wounded in a suicide bombing near an education center in Kabul. Earlier, the government said the Taliban killed six security guards in southwestern Nimruz province. In another incident, nine people were killed by a roadside bomb in eastern Ghazni province. The Taliban have denied involvement in the attacks. Azerbaijan's army has shot down an Armenian war plan as fresh clashes broke out over Nagorno-Karabakh. Authorities in the disputed region say 963 Armenian troops have been killed in the fighting since the 27th of September. The two sides accused each other of violating a truce and targeting civilians. Iran's foreign ministry has denounced a normalization deal between Sudan and Israel as fraudulent. The ministry accused Khartoum of paying a ransom in return for Washington, removing it from a list of states sponsoring terrorism. The deal makes Sudan the third Arab country after the UAE and Bahrain to normalize ties with Israel in the recent months. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says Europe will collapse if it fails to address the rising Islamophobia. Speaking to a rally, he said French President Emmanuel Macron is undermining freedom of belief. The remarks came after Macron launched a crackdown against Muslims, accusing them of separatism. The U.S. has recorded its highest daily COVID-19 cases as more than 83,000 people have tested positive overnight. India's infections have crossed 7.8 million where there were 53,000 new cases and 650 deaths in a day. In Pakistan, 12 more people have lost their lives to the virus, bringing the fatality count to 6,727. The number of global COVID-19 infections has topped 42 million with more than 1.14 million deaths. And in football, Manchester City have played a 1-1 draw with West Ham in the English Premier League. Mikel Antonio scored the opener for the Hammers before Phil Foden leveled for City in the second half. Pep Guardiola's Manchester City are on 8 points after 5 Premier League matches. Well, these were the headlines, news and detail coming after a short break. Welcome back and now the news in detail. In Afghanistan, 13 people have been killed and 12 others wounded in a suicide attack near an education center in Kabul. According to the Interior Ministry, the suicide bomber tried to enter the center but detonated his waist when security guards intercepted him. Earlier, the government said the Taliban killed six security guards in southwestern Nimruz province. In the third incident, nine people were killed by a roadside bomb in eastern Ghazni province. The Taliban have denied involvement in the attack. Violence in Afghanistan has increased since the government and the Taliban started peace talks in Doha last month. Meanwhile, NATO chief Jel Stoltenberg reaffirmed support for the Afghan peace process and called for reduction in violence. Now moving on, Pakistan says it has no favorites in Afghanistan and will respect all decisions made by the Afghan leadership during the peace talks in Doha. In a meeting with the visiting six-member delegation of Afghanistan's Wallace Jirga, Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi said the intra-Afghan dialogue has provided a historic opportunity for the peace. He reaffirmed Pakistan's vote for a peaceful, stable and prosperous Afghanistan. The foreign minister said progress in the talks would help in reduction in violence leading to ceasefire. 
but he stressed the need to remain watchful of peace spoilers. Azerbaijan's army has shot down an Armenian warplane as fresh clashes broke out over the Nagorno Karabakh. Azerbaijan's defense ministry said the areas of Lachin and Gavadli came under rocket and artillery fire from inside the Armenian territory. Authorities in the disputed region say 963 Armenian troops have been killed in the fighting since the 27th of September. The two sides accused each other of violating a truce and targeting civilians. This comes a day after U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said met for foreign ministers of the two countries in an attempt to end a nearly a month-long bloodshed. Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari says 51 civilians and 18 security forces have been killed in unrest in the country. In a statement, President Buhari blamed protesters for the violence. He says security forces use extreme restraint as the peaceful protests have been hijacked by the thugs and rioters. Buhari said another 37 civilians have been injured as the mayhem has not stopped yet. The president warned protesters against undermining national security and law and order. The protests turned violent on Wednesday after the military's shooting a day earlier. Mobs vandalized and burned police stations, courthouses, while police fired tear gas to disperse them. U.S. President Donald Trump says Sudan and Israel have agreed to make a peace and normalize their relations. In a joint statement, the U.S., Sudan and Israel said the agreement ends hostilities between Khartoum and Tel Aviv. More details in this report. Sudan is to normalize relations with Israel, the latest in a series of Arab League countries to do so. Development followed U.S. President Donald Trump's step to remove Sudan from a list of countries sponsoring terrorism. At the White House, President Trump said at least five additional countries want to join in a peace deal with Israel. The State of Israel and the Republic of Sudan have agreed to make peace. This is for many, many years they've been... Uh, at odds, to put it nicely, and to normalize their relations. Uh, this will be the third country where we're doing this, and we have many, many more coming. Hailing the move, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said this is the start of a new era in the region. He said the Israeli and Sudanese delegations will meet soon to discuss commercial and agricultural cooperation. As Sudan's acting foreign minister said, the deal for normalizing ties with Israel depends on approval from its yet-to-be-formed legislative council. Palestinians condemned the agreement, terming Sudan's decision as a new stab in the back. This announcement harms our people and our fair case, and it encourages the occupation to commit more crimes and to deny our rights. It also harms the national benefits of Sudan and will harm the Arab interests in the region. This announcement serves the Zionist occupation and its expanding policy in the region. For sure, it only serves Trump's election publicity and Netanyahu in his internal conflict. Sudan is the third Arab country to set aside hostilities with Israel in the past two months after the UAE and Bahrain. Iran's foreign ministry has denounced a normalization de deal between Sudan and Israel as fraudulent. It now tweeted accused Khartoum of paying a ransom in return for Washington removing it from a list of state sponsors of terrorism. On Friday, U.S. President Donald Trump announced that Sudan has agreed to normalize relations with Israel. With the deal, Sudan has become the third Arab country after the UAE and Bahrain to normalize ties with Israel in the recent months. Palestinian leaders have condemned these agreements as a betrayal of their cause for statehood in Israeli-occupied territories. Israel says it will not oppose U.S. sales of specific weapon systems to the U.A., referring to the American F-35 fighters. This was said in a joint statement by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Benny Gantz. The Israeli leader stressed that the new understandings are not part of the recent peace agreement it signed with Abu Dhabi. Washington agreed to consider allowing the U.A. to buy F-35 jets in a side deal to a normalization agreement with Israel. On Thursday, Gantz signed a defense agreement with his U.S. counterpart, Mark Esper. The pact confirms Washington's commitment to maintain its allies' qualitative military edge in the Middle East. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says Europe will collapse if it fails to address the rising Islamophobia. 
The remarks came after French President Emmanuel Macron launched a crackdown against Muslims, accusing them of separatism. Speaking to a rally, Erdogan said Macron is undermining freedom of belief. He also condemned recent police raids on the homes of Muslims. Macron needs treatment on the mental level. What else can be said to a head of state who does not understand freedom of belief and who behaves in this way to millions of people living in his country who are members of a different faith? First of all, a check on the mental level. The U.S. has strongly criticized Turkey's test of Russian S-400 ballistic missile defense system. In a statement, Pentagon spokesman Jonathan Hoffman said the test can harm the Ankara-Washington security relations. Hoffman said an operational S-400 system is not consistent with Turkey's commitments as a U.S. and NATO ally. Earlier, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan confirmed that Ankara has conducted the test of S-400 on October 16th. He said Turkey doesn't need to take permission from the U.S. on this matter. U.S. President Donald Trump's administration has been trying to pressurize Ankara to cancel the S-400 purchase. Energy voting has started in the first phase of parliamentary elections. The polls are scheduled to span over several weeks, with first round ending tomorrow. The elections are being held under a new electoral law which allocates 50% of contested seats to pre-selected lists. In the second national elections this year, the country will be electing 568 seats out of 596 in the lower house of parliament from Saturday. Among the remaining contested seats, President Fateh al-Sisi can appoint up to 28 legislators directly. Sisi has been in the power since 2014 and has launched a large-scale crackdown on the political dissent in Egypt. Ethiopia says it will not cave to aggression over the dispute of Nile water supplies. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed office said threats to efforts for resolving the dispute are clear violation of international law. In a statement, the office said Ethiopia will not recognize any kind of agreement which is based on colonial treaties. Egypt has said it is dependent on the Nile water for more than 90% of its freshwater supplies. In a phone call with Sudanese Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok, U.S. President Donald Trump called for a harmonious solution to the dispute. Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan have been locked in a bitter dispute over the falling and operation of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Well, now it's time to talk, take a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. The number of global COVID-19 infections has topped 42 million with more than 1.14 million deaths. India's infections have crossed 7.8 million with over 53,000 new cases and 650 deaths overnight. Brazil has recorded 571 coronavirus deaths in the past 24 hours, taking the tally to over 156,000. More details in this report. The coronavirus continues to wreak havoc as it rages virtually throughout the world. Northern Hemisphere remains a region with major devastation as virus shows no sign of abating. The U.S. has recorded over 77,200 cases in the last 24 hours, marking its second highest number of single-day infections. After Argentina, Peru, Mexico and Colombia are set to hit 1 million infection mark. The World Health Organization has once again urged the world to take immediate action against rising surge in COVID-19 cases. We are at a critical juncture in this pandemic, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere. The next few months are going to be very tough, and some countries are on a dangerous track. Europe's infections have more than doubled in just 10 days, with several nations reporting their highest daily cases. Tens of millions of people across the region face tougher restrictions as the battle rising infections. Spain's Prime Minister warned that actual COVID-19 cases in the country may have exceeded 3 million. Meanwhile, President Emmanuel Macron said France will have to live with the virus at least until next summer. When I listen to scientists and I can tell you that we were not in disagreement when we spoke, we can see well that we are expecting this to last, at the best until next summer. The question is now how to live with the virus during this period. Elsewhere, North Korea has urged its citizens to stay indoors amid warnings that dust blowing in from China can spread COVID-19. 
The new coronavirus has claimed 12 more lives in Pakistan overnight, raising the death toll to 6,727. The health ministry says 847 people have been tested positive for the disease in the past 24 hours. The ministry said there are over 9,000 active COVID-19 cases in the country. It said out of over 327,000 countrywide cases, more than 310,000 have recovered so far. The ministry said over 143,000 cases have been detected in the Sindh province, while Punjab has reported over 102,000 cases. In the capital Islamabad, over 18,000 have been infected so far. The United Nations is marking the 75th anniversary as it came into being in 1945 with the ratification of its founding documents. There is no other global organization with the legitimacy, convening power and normative impact as the United Nations. United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres has urged the world to increase efforts for ending human suffering from poverty, inequality and hatred. He said in the current times it is of extreme importance for countries to come together and fulfill the promise of the United Nations. Meanwhile, the Pakistan Army extended best wishes to the global body on its anniversary. In a tweet, the military's media wing said Pakistan has contributed over 200,000 troops in 46 UN peace missions around the world. Earlier, Prime Minister Imran Khan said Pakistan remains committed to supporting United Nations objectives of maintaining international peace and security. The 73rd founding day of Azad Jammu and Kashmir government is being observed today. Kashmiris have pledged to continue struggle until liberation of Indian-occupied Kashmir and accession of the whole territory to Pakistan. More details in this report. Kashmir Foundation Day is being observed throughout the state with simplicity following COVID-19 measures. President of Azad Jammu and Kashmir, Masood Khan, dedicated the day to the heroic resolve of Kashmiris to raise the flag of liberty and self-determination high and to celebrate Kashmir's eternal bonds with Pakistan. Prime Minister Raja Farooq Heather Khan called upon the UN to play its leading role in resolving the long-standing dispute. Meanwhile, Pakistan's President Arif Alvi also urged the international community to implement the UN Security Council resolutions. He said the Security Council should put pressure on Indian government to end its suppression in the occupied valley. While Prime Minister Imran Khan reaffirmed Pakistan's commitment to resolve the Kashmir issue peacefully. Guinea's incumbent President Alpha Conde has won the presidential election with 59.5% of the vote. The victory gives a third term to Conde after a bitterly fought poll. The electoral authority said Conde's rival and opposition politician Salo Dillian received 33.5% of the vote. Diallo said that he has the evidence of fraud against Conde and will lodge a complaint with the Constitutional Court. Earlier, the president pushed through a new constitution allowing him to bypass a two-term limit for presidents. Following the move, security forces launched a crackdown on protesters killing dozens of people. The violence sparked condemnation by the U.S. and other countries. U.S. President Donald Trump is set to vote in Florida before campaigning next in three swing states. Trump will join over 53.5 million Americans who have cast record early ballots ahead of November 3rd election. U.S. President Donald Trump and rival Joe Biden have begun a sprint through the final 11 days until Election Day. U.S. Elections Project says the November 3rd polls can witness highest voter turnout in over a century. The surge in early voting is a sign of intense interest in the contest. Several states have expanded in-person early voting and mail-in ballots as a safer way to vote amid coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, Democratic nominee Joe Biden is heading to the battleground state of Pennsylvania for two events. Former President Barack Obama will campaign in Florida on behalf of his former vice president. Although Biden leads Trump nationally, opinion polls show a much closer race in crucial battleground states that will decide the election. Trump will hold rallies in North Carolina, Ohio and Wisconsin after casting his ballot. Malaysia's King Al Sultan Abdullah will consult political leaders today to discuss proposals by Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin. 
In a statement, President Shilpat Place said the Premier had asked the King to declare a state of emergency in the country. It said King Abdullah understands the need for leadership amid resurgence of coronavirus cases. Meanwhile, opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim denounced the proposals presented by Moyuddin. He said Moyuddin is trying to avoid showdown in Parliament House by presenting emergency proposal. Council of Rulers, comprised of Malaysia's nine royal houses, has the power to withhold law and question national policy. In Chile, clashes between police and anti-government protesters have erupted in the streets of the capital, Santiago. The latest unrest started just days before a referendum to decide on a new constitution. Riot police used tear gas and a water cannon to disperse the crowd. The demonstrators have been demanding a new constitution while protesting in the streets. In the upcoming refer referendum, voters will choose whether to reject or accept the drafting of new constitution. Interior Minister Victor Paris said the plebiscite is a way for Chileans to resolve their differences. Opposition argues it is unnecessary to change a document that has made Chile one of the most stable economies in the region. And now it's time to take a short break. Stay tuned. In Cambodia, the dead toll from flooding and landslides caused by heavy rains has risen to 39. The National Committee for Disaster Management said 38 people are still missing. It said around 483,000 people have been impacted by the floods and landslides. Heavy rains and floods also ravaged neighboring Vietnam where at least 84 people have been killed in the past week. British vaccine developer AstraZeneca has resumed the trials for COVID-19 vaccine. AstraZeneca said the U.S. trial of its experimental vaccine is starting after the approval of regulators. AstraZeneca paused its U.S. trial on September 6 after a report of a serious neurological illness in a participant. Johnson & Johnson has also announced to resume vaccine trial from next week. The U.S. company paused its large late-stage trial last week after a study participant became ill. Meanwhile, Brazil's pharmaceutical company has signed an agreement with Russia to produce its Sputnik V vaccine. The private Uniaukumica company said the production of vaccines will start in the second half of the November. Residents of India's capital Delhi say the city has become a gas chamber as it continues to record poor air quality. According to the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi, the air quality index stood at hazardous category with the reading at 310. New Delhi residents say it feels as if they will have to carry an oxygen cylinder on their backs in a few days. Citizens coming out of their homes in the morning say they could feel the air was not fresh. New Delhi here in Delhi, rather than maintaining our health, we are breathing in pollution. It's been all polluted air for the last about a week and a half, and from the last one to one and a half weeks since I have been cycling, I can feel the difficulty in breathing. In the U.S., Colorado has seen three of its largest wildfires in state history occur this year, two of which are still growing. An explosive wildfire has poured avocations of several mountain communities in the state. The blaze has caused the closure of Rocky Mountain National Park as it burned another 45,000 acres. This comes in addition to more than 1 million acres of wilderness in Colorado have deemed off limits to the public. Officials say the East Troublesome Fire has now burned 170,000 acres and was only about 5% contained. The National Weather Service has forecasted continued hot, dry, windy conditions in much of Colorado. In football, Manchester City have played a 1-1 draw with West Ham in the English Premier League. Mikel Antonio scored the opener for the Hammers before Phil Foden leveled for City in the second half. City dominated possession throughout the game but could not find a winner. Kevin De Bruyne came on as substitute after missing last two games through injury. West Ham worked hard but had to dig deep to secure a first point against City since January 2016. 
Pep Guardiola City are on eight points after five Premier League matches. Leeds United outplay Aston Villa by 3-0 in the Premier League. Patrick Bamford scored a second half hat-trick to secure a win for Leeds United. Leeds secured a lead in 55th minute when Bamford pounced Emiliano Martinez's pushed out shot to slot home the loose ball. 12 minutes later, Bamford capitalized on the lead making it 2-0 with a fine shot from the edge of the area. The Leeds striker then completed the hat-trick curling finish after 74 minutes for his first Premier League treble. With this victory, Leeds United move up to third place with 10 points and two points behind Ashton Villa. Mercedes Valtteri Bottas has completed a sweep of Portuguese Grand Prix practice session after finishing fastest on the grid. Bottas teammate and championship leader Lewis Hamilton was the second fastest. Red Bull's Max Verstappen came third with Alfa Tauri's Pierre Gasly finishing fourth. This season, Mercedes have qualified on pole for every race and set to extend that run to 12 in a row. And now it's time to have a look at the weather update across the globe. And for the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news.